Well, it's time for another ERI update video. I'm gonna to try to move fairly quickly because there is a lot that's been going on. One of those things I talked about in the last video, I said we were um, assessing uh, multiple people that were looking at hiring um, and that list has grown. There's actually a few more people that we're looking at um, that has come up since I put out that last video. So um, we've got five or six people right now that we're kind of in a process of assessing for for potential work. In fact, I'm meeting with one of them this afternoon. Um, so we're excited for that. Um, I feel like a lot of what's been going on, and I talked about this a little bit in the last video, is I'm trying to get us set up in a process where like a lot of the hats, especially that I wear, that I can slowly be like taking them off my head and handing them to, to other people. Um, and so one of those things, uh, we've got someone that we're hiring uh, to help publish all the podcasts. So all the stuff that happens after we, we record a podcast and have you know rendered the, the edited audio and the video and kind of put that in YouTube, everything that comes after that. Um, setting up the, the post on our blog and writing that content and setting up the links for that and then doing that in, in YouTube usually, and then doing that for the way that it's going to appear in iTunes and the way it's going to appear in an email that we send out and the Facebook post and the Twitter, all of that. Um, I've now documented my entire process for doing that for both audio blogs and course clips. In fact, I'm going to put on the screen um, a quick video. In fact, I'm going to have to probably speed it up, but to show how I've documented this process with um, a lot of screen captures and explanations and even sometimes tutorial videos when it's more complicated, like um, how to use Photoshop to create the different versions of pictures that we use and things like that. Um, and this took a long time to document and then to kind of like recheck as, as, as I did the process a few more times to make sure that I hadn't missed anything. But it's awesome because now um, I don't have to do that anymore. Now I just have to train someone to do it. So I'm in that process right now of, of training a person to do those steps and it's one more hat that I can take off my head. And, and, and the more of that that I can do, um, the more time that I can focus on doing things that I haven't been doing enough of lately, like fundraising and writing blog posts and some of the things that, that I would like to be doing more of. And as our team has been growing, who is you know, helping with the different podcast uh, episodes and parts of that process is I've been working on this spreadsheet uh, that's kind of ongoing, but a way that we can kind of all keep organized. So everybody knows who is editing what episode, um, when is the publishing date, uh, when, it, when, it, when are kind of different aspects of it due. Um, and I've even got this, you know, some cool conditional formatting going where everyone can kind of tell for the, for the part that they're responsible for uh, how soon is the due date. And so it turns red like on the actual due date. It's dark red if, the, if you're past the due date. And then it's like for, you know, the one, one, if you're one or two days away, it's orange and, you know, three days it's yellow. And then anything after that is, is green. Um, but then it also changes like as soon as you kind of say, hey, I'm done with this thing, it automatically turns green. It's this really easy way for us to get on there and see, all right, what do we need to work on next? What is the biggest priority? Um, and, and easy to keep on updating it as we figure out um, more episodes that we want to do. And it's been working really, really well for us. It's still kind of this document and process, um, but that's been helping us to, to stay organized with each other because now we've got four people um, working on kind of the, the publishing of these podcast episodes. I've accepted an invitation to speak at the Students for Life conference again in DC. I'm going to be doing an advanced apologetics talk, so probably spend most of my time talking about bodily autonomy arguments and taking questions. And so I'm really looking forward to being there again. And you know, we'll have a booth there where we can meet up with students. The last time we were there, um, we spent the entire day talking to students who've been following our work and had a bunch of questions, and it was just a, a wonderful time. So certainly planning on being there in San Francisco as well. Um, and we'll be there at the Walk for Life uh, West Coast. We'll have a booth there this time. Um, and so if you're in California and want to meet up with us, it'll be a lot easier for you to find me uh, at the walk than in previous years when we were just kind of walking around looking for people that we knew. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And there's a change happening in the way that we do speaking for a lot of Students for Life's other events. Where a lot of our talks in the last couple of years have been at these kind of smaller regional conferences that they were calling leadership summits. And so they're, they're changing kind of the way that they, they do those in a way that's really good for everybody. Um, and so instead of Tim and I flying around the country a lot, um, speaking for audiences of 20 or 30 or you know, maybe 40 or 50 students um, and, and trying to get them excited about what we're doing and of course get them trained. What we'll be doing now is we'll be doing webinars for Students for Life that they can invite more people 
uh, onto, then we're coming to the conferences. And then obviously that's a lot less work for us. Uh, it's a lot less time away from home and away from the office. And so we're really excited <laughs> about this change and the way that we're gonna be um, continuing to partner with Students for Life to train their students to dialogue effectively. Another recent thing was I had a really great lunch meeting with some leaders from an awesome group that we were just really excited about called Ratio Christi, who has started a whole bunch of campus clubs all over the country that are kind of geared toward Christian apologetics. Um, and our approach, kind of our attitude or our culture at ERI, um, the kinds of things that we care about and the, the people that we're training, um, there's a lot of overlap with, with the kinds of things that Ratio Christi cares about in the people that they train. Um, and so there's a lot of partnership potential here. I'm not going to get into more specifics uh, until things are, are kind of set in stone, but um, it's, we've had several really, really good meetings, and I'm really excited um, about this organization and the kinds of things that we're going to be able to do with them in the future. So more on that later. Another thing I recently did was a radio interview on a conservative talk show that's based out of Charlotte. It's called the Ask... It's called the Ask Dr. Brown Show, um, and it went really well. Uh, he's a very pro-life uh, talk show host, and what they were planning on being uh, a pretty short interview got carried over in, you know, through the next commercial break because just things were really going well and we were really clicking, and I'll, I'll put a link in the description if you want to hear uh, that interview. There's another relatively new thing that we started doing this last month, which was releasing clips from the Equip for Life course podcast. I know this is a little bit confusing, so let's explain real quick. We've got two podcasts that we've put out. The first one is attached to the Equip for Life course. You only get access to it if you get the Equip for Life course. So that's called the Equip for Life podcast. More recently, we started this podcast, the ERI podcast, um, which is public to everybody, and we're doing very different things with it. Instead of long roundtable discussions um, and occasional interviews, we're doing um, long speech audios, long Q&A audios every once in a while, um, and more often than that, audio blogs where we're recording uh, articles that we've written, but it's like it's, it's read in the author's voice and talking a little bit more about those articles and, and why we wrote them, as well as um, these monthly ERI updates, um, and now also these clips from the Equip for Life course podcast. So it's something that, that we're releasing every Thursday morning is a clip from the Equip for Life course podcast that you're, you only really get if you get the Equip for Life course. So hopefully this does a few things. One, it gives you some more content uh, that you can uh, access for free, and, and hopefully it's a, just a helpful thing for you as you're um, hopefully trying to become a more effective uh, pro-life advocate. Um, but also it, it gives you a little bit more of a sense of what we do with that podcast and uh, hopefully cause you to consider getting the course where we've got a lot um, of really, really excellent content um, that we like to train as many people as possible with. So that's something that we're doing now. And once again, I'm not sending out emails every time we put those out because they're sort of clips or, you know, you know, kind of usually five to 10 minute range. Um, and so I'm, and I'm just, I don't want to send too many emails a week. I don't want to bug uh, everybody that's on our email list. Um, but if you subscribe to the audio version of the, of the URI podcast, um, then you will automatically get those uh, every Thursday. Another thing I'm doing for the fourth year in a row is I'm mentoring one of Students for Life's uh, students who uh, is a part of the Wilberforce Fellowship, uh, which means that um, I have a you know, kind of a Skype meeting um, with him once a month, and he uh, spends an hour or an hour and a half uh, with me asking questions and um, trying to kind of help this person and uh, talking about leadership, talking about pro-life apologetics, talking about philosophy. This has always been a really fun experience for us to be able to spend um, some dedicated time uh, with students who Students for Life have kind of figured out are, are rock star students that have a lot of leadership potential, um, and I'm, I'm just happy to be doing that again. We finished the September newsletter. In fact, those might be hitting your mailbox around the time this video goes up, or I actually might hit your mailbox before uh, this video goes up, uh, depending. I think they're going out in the mail right around now or um, even a few days ago. And so um, that'll be out pretty soon. But of course, you know, whenever we do that, that takes a little bit of time to, to put together. Uh, this is why we move these to quarterly. I, when, when we first started to arrive, some of you know, we were sending those out monthly. And... <laughs> That was not a good idea. <laughs> we were just we were spending a lot of our time working on newsletters, which is not our mission. Our mission is not, uh, to, you know, for Tim and, and Josh to put together newsletters, you know, for you know one fourth of our time or something like that. 
Um, and so uh, a few pro-life leaders um, and a few of our donors actually even gave us some really good advice fairly early on. And that advice basically was, um, we enjoy reading the newsletters and it's great, but we don't want to see as many of these. I, we, we want to see that you guys are spending more of your time focusing on the mission of ERI, the thing that we're, we're trying to fund, the thing that we're excited about. We don't want to feel like you're spending all your time telling us about the good stuff you're doing in you know the, the parts of the month where you're not having to work on a, on a newsletter. And I'll tell you, when we went from monthly to quarterly, it was such a sigh of relief. Um, and is, is, again, it's really helped us to um, put the you know, vast majority of our time uh, working on the mission um, and not kind of always worrying about um, a new thing that we need to print and, and send in the mail and, and, and all of that. So having said all that, we just did the quarterly newsletter um, and those will be hitting mailboxes soon. If you're not on our mailing list and you would like to be getting those newsletters, we'd be happy to send you one. Just contact us through the, the contact form at EqualRightsInstitute.com and let us know. And if you haven't yet, if you're wanting to be on the email list, if you go to EqualRightsInstitute.com, right at the top on the big picture of Tim talking to pro-choice people at uh, CSU Bakersfield, um, there's a button that says stay informed and you click on that and you can get added to our email list. We're sending on average a couple of emails a week right now. So we send out an email every Monday when we put out a new audio blog um, and then we put out an, an email every other Friday when we've put up a new article. And then if you also have gotten the Equip for Life course, you're gonna get an email from us every other Wednesday when we've published a new uh, long Equip for Life course podcast episode. And then there'll just be occasional extra emails um, every once in a while with uh, events and updates and things like that. And the last thing I'll say is uh, last week we recorded two episodes of the Equip for Life course podcast. So just to give you a sense of uh, what we've been talking about lately, um, the last episode we recorded, I'm really, really proud of. Um, we were talking about the infamous now James Franco video interviewing a Princeton philosophy professor named Liz Harmon on her pro-choice argument. And so uh, we spent a lot of time um, and worked really, really hard on an episode um, that is geared toward helping pro-life people to better understand the argument that Liz Harmon was trying to make, albeit was not communicating that clearly. Um, and it's a kind of a strange argument. Um, and so um, really spent some time um, trying to help people to understand her argument and, and what are the flaws with the argument. Um, and also some thoughts about um, how pro-life people could uh, maybe use social media more effectively uh, in times like this. And we also recently had an episode with Jacob answering a whole bunch of sidewalk counseling questions. We'd recorded two podcasts um, a while ago with him talking through a lot of the things that he does with sidewalk counseling, the things that, uh, you know, the main things that he says and some of the kinds of things that he's thinking about. And then we got a whole bunch of questions uh, for Jacob that, you know, would go into more detail on different uh, kinds of subtopics within that. And so we recently recorded uh, an interview with him. I, I think we asked him like 11 or 12 questions. I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was a whole bunch of questions uh, that we asked him. We just kind of blitzed through them and um, he answered them. And we've, we've gotten some really, really good feedback from people who have said that they've just been, uh, it's been really, really helpful to them. Even though they're just podcasts, it's just, you know, you're talking about, you know, right now probably two or three hours of audio um, that we've published now on Sidewalk Counseling, people saying that's really, really helped them, that it's really helped them feel more equipped to go out on the sidewalks and try to save lives and, and to be more effective while they do it. So again, we are so excited to have Jacob on the team um, and now helping people learn how to sidewalk counsel better. So those are a bunch of the things that we're working on. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting this ministry. And if you have any specific questions about what's going on behind the scenes here that you'd like me to cover next month, um, please uh, shoot me an email, uh, contact us through that contact form uh, if you don't have my email address and uh, I'd be happy to cover that in the next video. Thanks. Thanks.